Marcel Harding here. Welcome to my channel, Marcel Harding Art. Today I'm going to be doing a painting with green apples and a blue vase. Uh, this blue vase is uh, <laughs> a very expensive blade vase, so I've got to be careful. So I'm painting a back, black background of the still life in acrylics, um, using only five colors, titanium white, cadmium yellow light, uh, permanent lizard, French Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Umber. Now the black I'm painting, I'm mixing my own black up with 60% French Ultramarine Blue and 40% Burnt Umber. It gives me a black. Now the curtain I'm doing here was just a permanent Lizard and Crimson. It's got to be permanent because Lizard and Crimson is a fugitive colour, but it's, if it's permanent, it's fine. Now these are artist quality paints. Um, I'm using uh, Atelier. And I'm using a large brush here. And that this is sped up. Some parts will be sped up, some parts won't be sped up. And I'm using a large brush here. And I'm adding some um, French Oxygen Blue and Burned Umber to that. To the curtain for certain parts of the area to shade it. I'm using a large filbert brush for this. Just to blend everything in for the curtain. And then I'm going to start on the foreground. Now the foreground... Uh, it's just going to be white and grey, and I've just added uh, a bit of French Ultramarine Blue to the Titanium White. And I'll just, I'll spend the, my whole entire painting on the foreground. The background, I, hopefully I won't have to touch again unless I have to. But the foreground is something that I'll start off with, but I won't complete it right to the very end. In fact, one of the very last things I do before I sign the painting is actually work on the foreground. But I'll start it off here with um, Titanium White and French Ultramarine Blue. Just highlighting some of the shades here. Again, I'm using a large, uh, well, filbert brush. Um, just to uh, highlight some of the areas. Now, it's not final. Like I said, the foreground is something I play around with throughout the whole entire painting. Just adding some, some shading areas here to the foreground. And pretty much the background and the foreground is entirely made up. The The blue vase is real and the, the green apples are real. It's not from a photograph, it's from real life. Really would I paint anything from a photograph. Um, I usually paint things from real life, whether it's uh, outdoors, whether it's uh, landscape or wildlife or, or still life. So I'm just adding the shade here with more um, ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber just to darken it a little bit with a um, filbert brush. I really like filbert brushes for still life paintings, they're really good. Here's the blue vase here. Again, it's parts of it is sped up. Some parts will be sped up, some parts will be slowed down because it's like watching paint dry. I mean, it took me a couple of hours to paint. You don't want to watch me watch paint this for two hours. Nobody's got that time. People have lives. They've got to go out and work. They want to come home and they don't want to watch two hours of me painting. So, so they have that. So this is the blue vase. Um, flower patterns on it. It's kind of a rounder shape. Um, again, I'm using a filbert brush, large filbert brush. As you can see, it's a short-haired filbert brush. And I'm using uh, another filbert brush here, a long haired, smaller filbert size filbert brush, just to add some flowers because it's got a pattern on it, on the blue vase. Now the blue vase is ultramarine blue and uh, cadmium yellow light. Uh, but you've got to be careful because it'll go green. Blue and yellow make green. So I've also added a little bit of burnt hump as well to uh, neutralize the color. Otherwise it'll go green. You want it to stay blue, but you want it to lighten the blue. The picture of green blue is bit too dark so I added that so to kill off the, the green I had to add a burnt umber to it stops it from going green I will add some green color to it as well for the leaves so I'm just using a, a long haired smaller uh, filbert brush for the flowers I use a lot of filbert brushes in my still life paintings I love filbert brushes they're my favorite and some people like flat brushes other people like dagger brushes uh, other people like round brushes. I like my favorite are filbert brushes. They've always been my favorite. Filbert brush is like a flat brush, but its edges are curved. And I use both long head and short head for filbert brushes. Oops, sorry about that. I bumped the uh, bumped the camera there. <laughs> yeah, 
I've got the camera as close to it as I can, and I'm bumping the camera, so yeah. That's the trouble with filming something. It's easy to bump things, so I'm just uh, using um, a Liz and Crimson here with a, a little bit of cadmium yellow, and of course I've finished it off with some green leaves. And I'll make my own green with, with uh, French Ultramarine Blue and cadmium yellow light. Here I am adding some highlights with titanium white and a little bit of uh, French Ultramarine Blue. You know, so I never use white straight from the tube, I always mix it with a little bit of French Ultramarine Blue. Just doing touch-ups here on the blue vase. Um, I've got to be careful with this vase because it's actually an even expensive vase. It's a really nice vase. And here I am um, filling in the, the green apples uh, with the, uh, a large uh, short head filbert brush again because I love these filbert brushes and both long head and and short head, the, the short head filbert brushes I use in larger sizes to fill in to fill in the um to give it a, a base color. Here I am using ultramarine blue here for some tonal ridge at the bottom and, and the sides of the of the um apple, which is pretty cool. And I use the lo long head filbert brushes for more detail. You don't want to use a flat brush when it comes to a round object because the flat brushes it piles up on the edges and you create a hill on the edges and you don't want that. It looks like a cardboard cutout. Yeah. Use filbert brushes when it comes to still life and you'll never regret it. So I'm continuing to build up layers of colour here. Now I'm just going to put the uh, using uh, making my own black up and putting dots in there and also a couple of apples have got some some dents in them you know make it more interesting here I am again going back and putting some continuing to like I said I continue to work on the foreground throughout the painting here I'm using a dry brush to take some off adding some more dark in here now I'm just using titanium white and French ultramarine blue uh, with a long head uh, brush filbert brush to add some highlights to the apples now at the moment the apples look a little bright when I start adding the white, like I'm doing here, it will it will fade out that brightness. Um, also to note that, that the two apples on the right, uh, there's four apples, five, well four apples plus a half apple, two apples on the right, The one of the apples is in front of the other. Now I'm going to correct that, uh, which you won't see on, on footage here. The one on the far, apple on the far right, the apple that's behind the next apple is actually looking like it's in front and it looks like it's floating in the air. Um, I've actually corrected that. So when you see the thumbnail of my video, you'll see that that has been corrected. So uh, I actually correct that. Yeah, the, so uh, I must apologize for that. There's an apple there on the far right that, that's behind one apple, but it looks like it's in front. So it looks like it's floating in the air. So I apologize for that. That has been fixed up and there's no footage of that. So uh, on my thumbnail, you see the correction of that. So I apologize for that. And here I'm using titanium white and French Ultramarine Blue to basically make highlights of the apple. And see how now the apple looks a lot uh, more smoky looking <coughs> because they don't look so bright in, at, in, anymore. <coughs> Once I add these whites, and then again, I'm using a dry blush in between. Dry brush technique, there's no paint on it. To scrub out some of the extra white that is and push the white in and then going back and forth with a with a brush that's got paint on it and a dry brush and so the dry brush should be just scrubbing pushing the paint in and taking away excess while the filbert brush here see this is the dry brush here i'm just pushing the paint in and taking away excess and see how light it's now lighter and more smoky looking like an apple is and glossy and I've put a little bit of highlights on them as well this takes a long time I go back and forth and I play with these things for like an hour this painting took me about two hours to paint but I spent almost an hour just on this bit right here on all these apples in this bit here so I'll just go back and forth with the white paint and a dry brush 
uh, adding and taking away until I feel I'm happy with it. So, um, and that's to do with all the four apples here. And like I said, at the end of it, I correct those two far apples where the one apple behind looks like it's in front. I corrected that, and uh, so the one in at the back is stays at the back. So I've corrected that on my thumbnail, but you don't see the bridge of it. And I'm just continuing with this. It's a long process of back and forth with a dry brush and a, and a brush of paint. The highlighted brush, it's got white, titanium white and fruit and balloon mixed in it. Um, I never use white straight from the tube. In fact, I never use any color straight from the tube. Because they're what you call circus colors, and you don't want them. So how see how it is? It, it kind of shimmies the apple. It doesn't look so bright anymore once you apply these highlights. So you might be thinking, oh, they're the wrong colors and tonal range. Actually, in fact, they're, they're absolutely correct colors. You just have, when you add the highlights, it changes everything and makes it look right. So here I am scrubbing here again with a dry brush and a, and a brush brush with paint on it, going back and forth. Which takes a while. It's um takes a while here. Just going back and forth, doing all of them. Now, as you can see, that um that far apple there, it's behind this apple I'm painting. It looks like it's in front and floating in the, up in the air. Now, on the thumbnail, you'll see that that's been corrected. Now, I've corrected that footage, but you don't. I haven't got any footage of correcting it, so I do apologize for that. Yeah, that far apple. In there at the end there. It's actually behind the other apple, but it looks like it's uh, floating in the air. So I've corrected that uh, with the thumbnail. You'll see. And now I'm just adding the um, the stems to the apples, because an apple's got to have a stem in them. Yeah. Just burnt umber and titanium white. That's all. The burnt humber is mixed with a little bit of permanent alizarin crimson and the titanium white mixed with a little bit of uh, French Austrian blue. Just using a small round brush for that. See how the apples look a lot more glossy now? So that's a good technique to learn from. Just about finished the painting now. Now all I have to do is sign it. All I'm going to do now is sign this painting. And that's all good. I'm signing it with a, a small round brush and a French Ultramarine Blue and Permanent Wisdom Crimson added. With a rigger brush, I should say, not a round brush. A rigger brush is like a round brush, but it's long haired. So this painting's been a lot of fun. You know, don't forget I corrected the painting. That far apple at, at, on the right, it appears to be in front of the apple next to it, whereas in, it's actually supposed to be behind it, and I corrected that in a thumbnail. I painted, corrected the painting uh, when you don't see the footage of it. So yeah, I apologize for that. It's all good now. It's looking good. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.